Good morning. Championship football is back after two weeks of international action and Norwich City's playoff push continues. It's Plymouth Argyle at Carrow Road this weekend and Norwich are hoping to get some revenge, obviously, after a 6-2 defeat on the road at Plymouth earlier in the season. So on Tactics Board, I'm going to bring you my predicted starting eleven for the game and a little tactical preview of how I think things will play out on that side of things. So without further ado, here's the eleven I think David Wagner will trust to do the job for him at Carrow Road. So I've gone for Angus Gunn in goal, Jack Stacey at right back, Shane Duffy and Ben Gibson in the heart of defence with Sam McCallum at left back, Kenny McLean and Marcelino Nunez in deeper midfield positions. Gabriel Sara on the right, Borja Sainth on the left and Ashley Barnes behind Josh Sargent up front. Angus Gunn was away with Scotland obviously in the last couple of weeks but came back with no sort of extended timeline, doesn't appear to have any injury issues and when that man is available he goes in the team as I'm sure anyone who's watched Norwich this season will understand and it will be interesting to see actually where he ends up in the the player of the season voting he's definitely in that sort of top three or four alongside Kenny McLean, um, Gabriel Sara, I suppose maybe Jonathan Rowe and Josh Sargent are sort of in the conversation as well although obviously their injury issues may hamper their opportunities to, to actually win the award but it'll be interesting to see where he does end up in that because I think there's been not only an improvement in his performances uh, this season but also an increased appreciation from fans as a result so he's definitely getting into that sort of fan favourite bracket I think the fact that he's an absolute top quality goalkeeper is becoming less of a fringe opinion and a very very mainstream one now so it'll be interesting to see where he ends up in there but of course for this weekend if he's available he starts and I've got him in goal. Jack Stacey at right back, similar story after his performances in the last few months. Since Norwich started to pick up, he's been actually really excellent. Another good performance against Stoke, although you would like to see him improve the consistency of that final product, perhaps. I think that might be the only real criticism you can have of him in the last few weeks is that you'd like to see more of his balls sort of reaching teammates. Um, but apart from that, very few complaints and you'd be surprised if it's anyone other than him. At right back, at centre back, I had a, a decision to make on what Wagner would go for because obviously Jakob Sorensen has actually been very good in the last few weeks, if you, if you ask me, or in the last couple of weeks when he's had to fill in at centre back with Grant Hanley's injury issues. But Shane Duffy is back from injury now and he's someone that Wagner has trusted a lot throughout the season and has pretty much started wherever available. So I think it will be a close call. I wouldn't be surprised if either of these ended up in the 11, but I have just marginally gone for Duffy because of how how much Wagner trusts him and how much he, he rates him. I think another area where Duffy maybe would be beneficial uh, as opposed to Sorensen is that Plymouth do give away a lot of set pieces in dangerous areas. They're pretty poor at defending set pieces as well so that could definitely provide an opportunity for Norwich and when you look at the person who's on the end of a lot of those set pieces especially the corners the corners are pretty much aimed at him every single time when he's in the team it is Shane Duffy so I think Wagner may look to exploit that by having Duffy in his team although as I said it's obviously been a couple of months out he likes to ease players back in Sorensen has been very good as well so I wouldn't be surprised at all but I've just gone very marginally for Shane Duffy alongside him Ben Gibson and we're back to absolute certain starters really aren't we and it, it feels like a shame actually now that he's very likely to leave the club in the summer because in the last few weeks he's put in some absolutely fantastic performances which is good to see given obviously what he's been through personally and I'm sure he's keen to end his time at Norwich if he does leave this summer uh, on a positive note and he looks to be doing that so I've got him at left centre back at left back Sam McCallum again not really much choice to be made he's still in this sort of audition period for a new contract and it feels like that may well hinge on both his performances until Demetrius Yanoulis comes back from injury and also what division Norwich are in next season so some pressure on him to deliver I didn't think he was especially good against Stoke but he wasn't so bad that Wagner will be desperately looking for for other options and he has proved himself for most of the season and he has played pretty well throughout the season so uh, I'd back him to get back into form against Plymouth and yeah, with Yanoulis' fitness problems, 
you'd, you'd say he's very, very, very likely indeed to start at left back in the centre of midfield. I've gone for McLean and perhaps optimistically Marcelino Nunez, who is only training for the first time today, um, as I speak on Thursday, and isn't scheduled to do a sort of full programme. We all know how important he's been for Norwich this season. So in a game where they'll hope to dominate possession and probably expect to dominate possession and they'll know that the onus is on them to create chances, you'd think Nunez would be perfect for that system and that Wagner will try everything to get him into that starting eleven. However, I spoke earlier about the fact that he obviously likes to bed players in fairly slowly normally once they've come back from injury and uh, he did sort of hint at that in his press conference so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw Gabriel Sarra dropping back into that deeper midfield position and Christian Fastact on the right although I think you look at that and you have to feel that Norwich would lose a great deal of, of creativity and possession and in this game especially you feel that it could be important to, to get their more technical players and more creative and attacking players on the ball as much as possible so I'm sure I'm sure Wagner will try everything of course he has that alternative if Nunez doesn't end up being fit because I don't think he's yeah he's had that full day of training uh today so yeah definitely a dilemma on Wagner's hands a problem for him but if he can sort it out then this feels like it could be the sort of game that, that Nunez will thrive on alongside him Kenny McLean and what more needs to be said about him I think he's already played 48 games with eight left hopefully more in the playoffs and then he's likely to go off to the Euros so it's been an absolutely mega season uh, for the Scottish midfielder at 32 years of age but he just seems to be taking it in his stride and he could be an important player for Norwich again in this one I've got him in midfield Gabriel Sarah on the right and he actually really seems to be suiting this role I think his performances hadn't been great going up until that that sort of switch he had had a couple of good ones where he was moving in the right direction but I think in this right wing role he's actually really really thrived the space that he's provided between fullback and, and centre-back really gives him the opportunity to play through balls into Josh Sargent and exploit that space it also opens up a channel for Jack Stacey because there aren't many championship defences that are going to afford uh, Gabriel Sara too much space sort of on the corner of their box so that drags the fullback inside a lot of the time it gives Stacey uh, the opportunity to attack and to get balls into the box. So for a number of reasons for Norwich, actually, although Sarah is maybe their least natural winger that they've played out there this season, it does seem to be working for them. So it would be a shame if he had to be dragged back into that midfield position because of Marcelino Nunez and obviously the fact that he's only just come back from international internationals with Chile. Um, but it will be an option for Wagner. But I hope that he's out on the right wing. I think a lot of Norwich fans will do as well. And that's what I'm predicting for this one. On the left, I've got Borja Sainz, who maybe had his best game in a Norwich shirt at Stoke. And you hope that he can continue that form into this one. Plymouth aren't likely to leave as much space in behind as Stoke did, especially as an away side coming to Carrow Road. But he's shown before that he can unlock deep defences and that he can play those one-twos and find himself on the on the outside of the box and still create opportunities and score goals for himself um, from there. He's very good at those sort of snapshot shots. He's very good from distance. So he's clearly got a wide range of skills. He applied some of them at Stoke. You feel he may need to apply certainly slightly different ones uh, against Plymouth, but um, it definitely feels possible when I'd go for him on the left wing, which isn't, I don't think, a surprise to anyone up front. Ashley Barnes and Josh Sargent, and I come on here basically whenever they're both fit and talk about the quality of that partnership. Sargent obviously was a, a sort of late injury call and he had to be withdrawn um, from his in international setup with the USA so that he could do some fitness work after a knock on his ankle against Stoke. But he seems ready to go now. Of course, there will be a consideration for Wagner with this game on the Friday and then Leicester on the Monday. And it feels like Leicester is maybe the bigger test. But you look at that and maybe at the end of the season without being pessimistic, if they drop points against Plymouth or Leicester, which one are they going to regret more? And which one do they have more chance of picking up three points when it's absolutely vital as well? So I'd expect to see Wagner go for Sargent up there. I don't think he has much of an alternative either, which is part of it. He obviously doesn't feel that Van Hooydonk can, can currently um, play that role. You know, you saw him with the under-21s recently, and I think that tells the full story. Up front with Sergeant Ashley Barnes, just looks a completely different player alongside the American, and you'd say that he could exploit maybe some of the defensive weaknesses that Plymouth have shown 
this season. So um, definitely an opportunity for those two to go and attack this game because although Plymouth have been better attack-wise than maybe a lot of the teams around them defensively, they have been very leaky indeed. So that will be something Norwich will be keen to exploit. They will have to be wary. Of course, Morgan Whitaker, I think he's got 26 goal contributions already for Plymouth. He'll be playing on the right against Sam McCallum, who likes to roam forward. And we know how important it is in Wagner's setup for his fullbacks to attack and, and to maraud and to go forward. So there, there will be an opportunity for Whitaker if Norwich do do that that sort of normal setup and don't adjust it to deal with him. Um, and it may be a difficult individual task for Sam McCallum, but Whitaker does stand out quite far ahead of the rest of his Plymouth teammates. So as long as Norwich can deal with the man that got a hat trick against them earlier in the season, and I know that is uh, that's easier said than done, then they shouldn't have too much else to worry about because this feels like a team that Norwich should be able to pick off. But of course, nothing is a given in the championship, especially with the pressure of this playoff race. And we'll have every kick covered um, so that you can make sure you're across it. Whether Norwich, hopefully not, um, don't take advantage of this opportunity or whether they go on and secure another very big win. So go across our channels, uh, join our WhatsApp, um, pinkin.com pinkin.com forward slash subscribe for, for all of our subscriber exclusive content of course plenty more good content on this youtube channel uh i think there's more but uh it's hard to keep track of it all now that's how much good content there is out there thank you once again for joining me on tactics board and i'll see you here very soon hopefully after another big win for norwich against plymouth <laughs>